So this was released in 1997 by the director Satoshi Kon. It's based off a novel by Yoshikazu Takushi about a girl named Mima, who is a Japanese pop idol who becomes an actress who suddenly changes her career path. And to her great dismay, she discovers that she is the target of a stalker who's very upset about that decision and causes her... He torments her so much that she causes... She starts to lose her grip on reality and she can't really tell what's fiction and what's reality anymore. And I, what I find really interesting with this film is I can't separate it from Black Swan, which is the Darren Aronofsky film, which he has directly said that he's very influenced by it and that he even bought the film rights, which is very dedicated. He bought the to film being, rights to Perfect Blue, yeah. Yes, he's very dedicated to that influence and specifically in the sense that both Mima in this film and Nina in Black Swan keep seeing doppelgangers on themselves in mirrors and in reflections and it's especially that those doppelgangers represent different parts of themselves. And what's interesting is that it's the opposite. For Perfect Blue, the doppelganger represents this sense of innocence or purity that Mima believes she's left behind by becoming an actress because she's told to do some racy scenes for the television show that she's working on. And in Black Swan, of course, it's the opposite because it's this very oppressed, like repressive, pure little girl who is very good at being the white swan in Swan Lake. But when she comes to do the black swan, which is the liberated, dark, sexual character, she just can't push herself to that extreme. And I, I have heard people accusing Black Swan of directly copying Perfect Blue, which I don't quite understand because the films are doing very different things. I think with Perfect Blue, it's very much a social commentary about how the outside world is pressuring women, controlling their lives, because Mima has no control over any decision in her life at all. She sits in these meetings with her agents and they just turn to her and go, right, so you're going to become an actress now. You're going to do this, you're going to do this. She does these explicit scenes, not because she wants to, but because she feels like she owes some sense of loyalty to her managers. And of course, with Black Swan, it's more of a self-inflicted anxiety, I guess, because she's so desperate to be the white and the Black Swan at the same time. It's this trying to encompass all things, to be perfect. And so I think especially what's, I don't know, like I don't know a huge amount about pop idols in Japan, but from my understanding, you know, we think that pop stars are very manufactured in the West and in Japan, it's even more so. They just audition a range of boys and girls who have no experience, but they pick out the cutest ones, put them in a band together, and then they just, every single aspect of their private life is controlled. Like what's extreme for pop idols is to confess that you are addicted to eating ramen. Like that's a scandalous thing that... Um, so yeah, I think it adds that level to it as well, if you're looking at it in the context of Japanese culture, I guess, as well.